Now we had some issues with the slides, which we shared with you. He had noticed one of the issues with the slide. And guess what? His salesperson said, oh, that's normal. And it's normal for you to see outside. Hey, we've been told, carry rags. You just stuff it in the holes because those holes, those are for the water to go out. Those are drain holes. Really? Might have been born at night, but not last night. So who made this? I don't know. I don't know how drunk he was. Well, he did to screw that one up. It's RV inspection day, and today we are in Ocala, Florida, about to inspect this 2023 Newmar Country Star 3709. Now stick around. We have no idea what we're going to find, and neither do our customers. They are home, begging us not to call before noon. So stick around. We're going to update you at lunch and the end of the day. First glimpse. Whew. I got a question for you. What does this mean every time I do this? Some people that I know said something about maybe it's about sequencing the volume with the image. Listen, we're not that smart. We're, we're not geeks, meaning I don't have a different taping machine and a different camera machine. We have a basic GoPro like everybody else and it's synced with those microphones. So I want you to put in the comment below, what do you think? Why do I do this? What's my reason? First glimpse, as I say to you all the time, those little seals, I just want you to look at this. So what do you think if the water comes down here and this is your slide, what will this do? Don't you think it's gonna do like a funnel and it's gonna keep your water and go down there? Why is it like this? Keep an eye on that because that will rot your slide out. So talking about rotting, the first thing we have when we walk in here, this is actually a door. But for us right now, when we went in there, it's not a door. This is a wall. When you get in there, it is bad. The first thing we did is this invisible wall is actually moldy wall. It's brand new. It's insane. We're going to have to figure out what it is. You can see the humidity tester is already here. In here, when you lift this, you might as well open a, a sewer plant. This is totally moldy smell. And just to show you, you know, like an old pair of, of, of skate. We used to have leather skate back in the day. So this is 50%. So this is the same floor a little bit further. So it's the same thing. It's, so this, this floor is a lot of humidity. Stinky. <sighs> Woo. Really? So, <clears throat> Sorry, I can't. Okay, yeah, so that's stop enough. Stop that. <laughs> no, you don't have to stop that. Continue that. You remember what Dwayne said? I wanted to bring this because people wonder, why do we do what we do? Well, first of all, it's to save people a lot of money. It's to show you the state of the industry. And it's also to, yeah, self-promote ourselves because this is an inspection business. This is what we do for a living, I understand. But at the same time, it's to promote the industry itself. So if ever there's some good inspectors out there, we're trying to promote what we try to do, what we try to achieve. I'd like to be able to do the math, the approximate math of how much hundreds of thousands we may have saved people since the last couple of years. And there's mathematical equation we couldn't do, like when you went to pick up your unit on Saturday, and you finally spent four days there, just like Pete, to have things fixed, to wait on them, to rent a hotel because, well, it's not ready. I'm gonna spend the day here. So there's mathematical equation we cannot give as a, this is how much you're gonna save with an inspection. On my first glimpse so far, these are the things that we found that hit me. Nothing detrimental yet, but I'm definitely gonna to have to chase this. Which brought me to, when I walked in there, it's chilly here this morning, so as a nice husband as I am, I already tried a heat pump so my wife would be warmer when she gets there. And no, there's no heated floor on there, so that's going to be interesting. Just to bring back the deceiving tactics people use, as you see, all the slide outs are open. We walk in there, the first thing my wife says, wow, this is beautiful for a used unit. Use you, it's brand new. 
but we, we understand there's a little bit of dirt on the floor and we, we, we kind of see the stain on the sofa here and there that somebody just rubbed on it. This well, is I, brand new. But I could smell the mold. That's why I thought it was used. You heard that? So the mold was a big thing because it's like, okay, this is mildew. Like, no, this is brand new. So remember this, that's important when you walk into a rig, use your sniffer. Now let's go see what this day is gonna bring and hopefully we're gonna make it to lunchtime. All right, so let's come on in here and check out the stow and go in this beautiful RV. What I love is everything's light and bright, right? I have great access to be able to cook, microwave, wash my hands. Now, I already know, I've met my customers. Hey Jeff, hi Kim, and we know that they can probably squeeze through here. But if you were any bigger, you won't be able to. Here's your half bath. It is definitely a tight squeeze. You can make it through. You're not really gonna be able to get to your bedroom unless you climb through here. So could I? It's gonna be a tight squeeze. So you have to think about that. So as far as the stow and go, I think it's pretty good, but I've got something else to say. We have just left the 2024 Tampa Super Show and we have met so many amazing subscribers. And I will bet that we have the best subscribers in all of YouTube. Shout out to all of you who gave us a wave, came over and talked to us, shared stories, took pictures with us. We enjoyed meeting every one of you. Thank you for coming up to us and thank you for watching our videos. So remember, give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends and hit subscribe if you haven't already because we have a lot to share with you on RV inspections. See you at lunchtime. Okay, so it's lunchtime recap. So coming on in here, as you can see, we've got the slides in. Well, we've got some issues going on. So with this particular slide here, we actually can visually see outside. And when we are outside together, well, Pierre has some things to show and share with you. Once this box is in, you'll be able to see what he's found on the outside. Now, this slide over here, we have got some crazy stuff going on with it. It's doing different things every time we put it out, every time we bring it in. It's extremely loud over here on this side. Very big clunking sound. From my side too, I'm getting a noise. But when Pierre brings in the slide, everything's sealed on this end. This side didn't. This side came in last. So it's not coming in the same every time we've done it. Okay, so we're putting the slide back out and it is quite a bit of hesitation and really loud once it goes back into place. So just listen, I'm gonna be quiet. As far as what I found going into the back of the coach, I did find a little bit of loose wallpaper up by the shower. I've not tested my water yet, but I will be testing that later today, as you know. And the other thing is that we have a crack that's in the wall above this slide. It's the Luan paper area that has a crack in it and it's a little bit soft right there. There is no moisture, so that's good. We're not sure what has caused that. And I also have, these are really puffy, but as you can see, this one has no puffiness to it. So I'm not really sure, you know, what went on there, but we're gonna keep you posted. And of course, we're gonna see you at the end of the day. All right, lunchtime recap. We have issues with two of the slide outs. So the one in the back is beautiful, well lined up, sits good. This one has been going in and out, and even the button you push it, then it doesn't do nothing. Then it goes and it goes like this. So there's a big issue with this, and both sides don't come out at the same time every time we sequence this. So see now this time, it's this that doesn't go all the way in. And this one, as, as you can tell, yeah. No. So that's a nice gap, beautiful. But hey. You were leaving when? <laughs> <laughs>
I love that line. That must have been Robert Roth that gave me this. So this is nothing, but I was just looking at another. It, there's no crack, we're good. But this door, and I've checked it from the inside, this needs adjustment. So I'll bet you if you're rolling down the road, you would be listening to this whistling big time. Let's go on the other side. Front, super, street side, slide out, beautiful. This is why we see outside. Okay, so think about this. This is flush and this is puffed out. Okay, so if you look at the top, the top is actually touching. So if you look at the side here, you see the side, it's touching. Here it's not touching, so it should go in. All right, well, how much more in can you go? You, you're already flush here. So this is pretty nice, pretty level. This is really flush, and then it goes back out. Okay, so here's my, here's the big picture. Just back up a little bit so I'll make people understand. So back up a little bit because I want you to see both those corners. So these two corners, this is a box. These trims are here. This one, if I look at the alignment, it's good. But if I look here, this is already touching the wall. Okay, so this should go down. So if this section should go down, and the one in the front should actually go up. See, this one is already touching down, so this go up. Well, I said, you back up a little bit. I said this goes up, and this has to go down. How can I go up and down in this little section? There's no way. So you're gonna have to have these trims fixed. This one's gonna probably get a little bit longer. They're gonna have to modify where this sits in this hole because this has to go lower a little bit in order to push this trim so it would actually clear. So who made this? I don't know. I don't know how drunk he was, <laughs> but this is kind of, this is the trim. It's not the whole box, it's the trim. But whoever, the numbnut that worked on this one, well, he did screw that one up, just saying. And I'm not supposed to, no, I promise to not use those words but I never said which year, I'm just saying. So on this note so far, that's where we're at. Let's just go confirm what Lowell found inside talking about this. Whatever time recap, because now I don't really know where we're at in time today. But I know it must sound weird because, okay, this should be lunchtime recap. There's something on the rock. I just needed to bring this topic. People call us Monday. Hey, I saw a unit yesterday. Can you come Wednesday? I hope, I, I don't want to insult nobody, but I hope you understand that this is what we do for a living. And you've been researching for the last year, three months, a year and six months, two years. And all of a sudden, when you saw something at the last second, you saw it yesterday and you already signed the paper and now you need an inspection. The point about our services is that we shouldn't be available right off the cuff two days later normally. If we're really busy and do what we're supposed to do, it'll always be a little bit of time. So I just want you to realize that salesmen got you wrapped around their finger because they try to push limits on you. They try to give you a time frame. They try to make you believe that it's, oh, it's a five to seven day politics. There's no such thing as politics. You know how many inspector inspect rigs out of the hundreds of thousands of units sold? So it's not a politic. This is a salesman tactic to try to get you wrapped there, to stay there. That's the principle. So just remember, we are not available normally on the snap of a finger. You did your research for so long, the inspector shouldn't be an issue to have to wait on them for a week, for two, for three. Do not fall in this trap of the salesman pressure. All right, let's go see what Lowell will talk to us about. Okay, you see what time it is? Yes, that's right. It's let's call the customer time. And unfortunately, we did make that dreaded call. And our customers, Jeff and Kim said, you know what, we're not buying a brand new unit and need to take it all the way back to the manufacturer right out of the gate. And he said to us very nicely, but very bluntly, dealers and manufacturers need to know right out of the gate, this is not what we want to do. Now we had some issues with the slides, which we shared with you. He had noticed one of the issues with the slide. And guess what? His salesperson said, oh, that's normal. And it's normal for you to see outside. Hey, we've been told, carry rags. You just stuff it in the holes because those holes those are for the water to go out. 
Those are drain holes. Really? Might have been born at night, but not last night. So we're gonna finish up this video a little differently. On our way home today, we're going to show you what we do when we leave an inspection. So stick around. So we're leaving. We're leaving. We are. And that's what Laurel's doing. She, I have to get back to working. customers when I've been on an inspection. I have a hard time talking to customers all day long. So yes, I am responding to customers, but we're out of here. Not only that, I also work on editing. Yes, that's what I do when we leave inspections and on our way to inspections as well. So that's the So what we do normally is call the customer or we'll talk to each other and I'll tell Laurel, so how was your day? So how was your day today? Well, my day was going great until we found so many things that we had to make a phone call to the customer. So now we're leaving early. It's gonna be a good day though. I have two grandbabies coming unexpectedly. But the thing is, you expect you're gonna be there all day in a brand new unit, right? How so was that's, your day? So that's what the customer told us and I appreciated the way you said it. Manufacturers and dealers gotta understand that this is enough, it's ridiculous. So I like the way he stood up the kind of stuff we say you finally put it out out there bluntly but we just had a salesman walk I by was us say no no that's a girl that works at service saleswoman excuse me she was all dressed up nice what was her words to us we all make a living off from selling glorified, glorified pieces, pieces of, shit. of shit that came her directly words. from them just saying so Pierre's driving and I'm gonna ask him a question all right, honey, so random question. I want you to think of some trivia, one little snippet that maybe our viewers would like to know about Pierre. What do you wanna know? In the comments below, what's something you'd like to know about Pierre? And, and spare me with the, are you always an ass like this? Yes. So here's your answer. Yes. 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 <laughs> I gotta say this. Okay. Charlene, 83 years old, living somewhere on the West Coast in California that chimes in all the time. We recognize you. We like your comment. It's fun. Thank you for chiming in. Thank you, Grandma Charlene. Yeah, yes. Cool. So we'll see how it goes. I just feel bad for them because now they're back on the hunt. So it's just to give you a snippet of how it could be, how the RV industry is treating you, how you can find ways to protect yourself. And this is one of them. Hopefully you appreciate that what we did and follow us for the next one. So remember, and do never forget, So, my wife hates it when I say so because she's got to edit those all the time. So, so see, that's how I put her to sleep. Okay, so come on in and let's talk about the stow and go in this beautiful country coach. So here's the thing, you have really, where, what am I in? It's a country star, oh. not a country coach. Country star, okay.